Imagine, you're 13 years old and it's 2 a.m. on a school night. You just finished an 150 chapter long Harry Styles in your name here fanfic on Wattpad. High off of no sleep and your delusions of grandeur, you begin to dream. What if there was an app where I could watch all my favorite fanfic tropes play out in 60 second increments and I had to shell out money every time I wanted to watch the next scene. What if the app had subpar acting, horrible writing, and this? I can't marry someone like you. Let's break up. <laughs> well, you no longer have to dream, folks, because the future is now. The future is real short. Actually, that's a little depressing. Um. Maybe I shouldn't have said it like that. Real Short is a mobile app that claims to be the next generation of HD streaming platform that changes the way you watch and consume. Consume what? It doesn't say. But I can tell you that they put as much effort into writing that prompt that they do into writing their scripts. So at least you can say they're consistent. I myself had to describe Real Shorts. I would say that they are an app that posts low effort scripted short form content that you have to pay for. It's basically like if Quibi and Wattpad had a baby, but instead of hiring good writers and A-list actors like Liam Hemsworth or Sophie Turner, those shorts found their writers off of Craigslist and their actors off of Facebook Marketplace. Now, to give you an idea on what to expect from this platform, let's explore a few of the titles. So some of these titles on Real Shorts include Big Bad Husband, Please Wake Up, Never Divorce a Secret Billionaire Heiress. As everyone knows, that's like the worst advice you could ever give someone. My Gorgeous Wife is an ex-convict. And the highly anticipated sequel aptly named My Big Bad Husband, Please Wake Up 2. Now this horrible bad content is ripe with memeing and perfect for TikTok virality. One of the first viral stories that came out of Real Shorts was faded to my forbidden alpha. Other YouTubers like Chad Chad and Curtis Connor have already posted videos on that short story. So that's not what we're gonna talk about today. No, they will be discussing another Real Shorts story that went viral on TikTok called Double Life of My Billionaire Husband. Now, the double life of my billionaire husband is interesting, to say the least. In true real shorts fashion, it has it has a lot of overacting, a lot of plot holes, and it doesn't really take itself too seriously. And that's the kind of viral stuff that I'm here for. So sit back, relax, and let's uh let's talk through the double life of my billionaire husband. So the double life of my billionaire husband starts with our main protagonist, Natalie Quinn. Now the show opens up with Natalie asking her father to borrow $50,000 because apparently her mother is on dialysis and she needs the money to cover her medical bills. Now her dad is rich, but she actually grew up poor. And it seems like he married a woman who already had money and then he himself made his own money. So even though he's super rich, her mother is not. Now her stepmother is upset that she went to her dad to ask for money. She calls her a beggar. So it seems like her stepmother isn't going to let her borrow the money to take care of her mother's medical bills until her evil stepsister comes out of nowhere and says that sure, she can have the money which I find weird. Why are you trying to give away someone else's money, sis? Because that money is not yours. But anyway, she says that she can borrow the money if she marries Sebastian Klein. We'll give you the money. What? If you marry Sebastian Klein in my place. Sebastian Klein, the legitimate son of the Klein family. Now, Sebastian Klein, or as her stepmother calls him. Sebastian Klein. Now, Sebastian Klein, as we come to learn, is the bastard son of the billionaire Klein family. So because of that, the evil stepsister doesn't want to marry him. So she tries to get Natalie to marry him in her place. Now, out of desperation, Natalie agrees. Wait, side note, but like they never explain why she actually has to marry him. Like why did the stepsister have to marry him in the first place? Like I'm assuming maybe there was some agreement between the two families it's very confusing they never explain it and honestly I'm thinking more about their story than the writers themselves are thinking about the story but like 
it's really bothering me. <laughs> Give me the context. I need context. So anyway, fast forward three weeks and it's the wedding. No, she has not met this man. No, she don't know nothing about this man, but she about to marry him for the money. So as I said before, she, the evil sister didn't want to marry Sebastian because he's a bastard and he has a bad reputation. I'll let these women who apparently don't know how to whisper at a wedding explain to you what that reputation is. Sebastian's a bastard and outcast. I heard that he hangs out with thugs all day and he can't keep a job. He shows up and he's definitely Hallmark attractive. How like every man on Hallmark is like conventionally attractive, but also very regular looking. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's like that. So they get married and right after the marriage, she ends up moving with him to his Airbnb. And that is not a joke. It's actually an Airbnb. <laughs> Living in an Airbnb that he's saying is his home because he can't move her into his real home. Then she know that he's hiding a secret, that he has a double life. Now, when I watched this, I said to myself, okay, this double life could be two things. Either this man is Batman or he's in the mafia, but I couldn't figure out which one. Also, if you haven't seen this and you wanna guess what his double life is, put it in the comments, let me know. Yeah, so they're married. They end up putting it off because they're both the black sheep of their families, the outcasts. And so they end up actually forming a tenuous friendship. But after some time passes, Natalie realizes no one has actually paid her mama's medical bills. So she goes to her father's house and he's not there, but the stepmom is. So Natalie confronts her stepmother and she's like, yo, like, where's my money? Like, okay, I married this random man that I didn't want to marry. I did my side of the bargain. It's time for you to uphold your side of the bargain. Where is my money? And the stepmom has the nerve to slap her. Just give me my money and I'll go now. <gasps> Not gonna lie, I guess. I would have slapped her back personally. If it was me, they would have had to arrest me. But for some reason, she just leaves the house. She don't do nothing. She don't like fight back. She don't, she just leaves the house dejected. Couldn't be me. So the girl is broke. All right. Um, she can't get a job. She's tried to get a job. She wasn't successful. So out of desperation, she ends up selling a gift that Sebastian bought her. So um, Sebastian ended up buying her a $7,000 pair of shoes designer shoes seven thousand dollar pair of designer shoes and in her desperation she decides to go to the pawn shop to sell them mind you she knows that this dude is supposed to be the bastard son of a billionaire family okay and he buys her seven thousand dollar pair of shoes but she thinks that they're broke let's put two and two together sis the man has money you need money and y'all are married, you know? Your mother's on dialysis, all right? You are married to a man who has access to money. You may have to get on your knees for the sake of your mama's kidneys, all right? I'm just saying, just saying. Um, child, anyway, so. She decides to sell the shoes, but last minute, she changes her mind and she tells the pawn owner, no, I'm not gonna sell these shoes. I decided not to sell them, they're important to me. I'll maybe come back to sell something else. Now, for some reason, the pawn shop owner takes this very personally, okay? And he's like, I want them damn shoes. I'm gonna get me them damn shoes if that's the last thing that I do. So he ends up getting very weirdly hostile and territorial. And after she leaves the pawn shop, he basically calls up some henchmen to follow her to try to steal the shoes. Now. I just want to point out when she walks in there right it's broad daylight she's in the pawn shop all of 30 seconds to a minute all right she ain't in there that long why why is it pitch dark when she walks back outside what's going on here now the henchmen end up getting the shoes they push her on the ground one guy's like i'm gonna have some fun with you until her husband pops up out of nowhere that's right sebastard stan and comes up out of nowhere ready to kick some ass, all right? Now at this point, I was like, hmm, you be doing a lot of legal activity at night, it seems like. You be saving women a lot, Batman? But then he took off his watch and just the way he took it off, I was like, it's giving mafia.
So now I don't know what to believe. So he ends up beating them up and he gives them a warning to tell his their boss that Sebastian Klein is coming. End up getting back to the house. She ends up telling them everything about her mother being sick, how she doesn't have any money and she's finding it hard to get a job and she's in this really tough situation and in all this debt because she needs to help her mother pay her medical bills. And after she basically just trauma dumps him, he responds by kissing her. Now, 20% of me is like, oh, that's so cute. But the 80% of me is like, is this kiss gonna pay her medical bills? Like, come on now. Time is ticking. Time is ticking. Pay her her money. Well, fast forward to the next day, and the first thing he does is that he pays her medical bills, but he doesn't tell her he's the one who paid them. He put it under her dad's name, so she thinks that, like, her dad paid them off. She also ends up getting a job at this new tech startup. The interesting thing about the tech startup is that no one actually knows what the founder and owner of the company, Bash Myers, actually looks like. It's mysterious. Who is he? Who is this Bash Myers? I wonder who it is. I don't know. Who could it be? So she starts her job. Everything's all cool and everything. Cut to the pawn shop owner. Remember the one who called the henchman and was like, still them shoes. He's knocked out in a pool hall. And he's woken up by none other than Sebastian Klein. So apparently, Sebastian Klein is in the mafia. Dun, dun, dun. Or he just has ties to the mafia. I don't. I'm be honest. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but it it wasn't it wasn't explained very well. Also, find out your best Myers. I am Bash Meyer. I am so shocked. Now at this point, I'm like, is he Batman? Because like he's he does own a billion dollar company. You know what I mean? He is stalking people late at night and trying to beat them, beat them up, you know? But no, um, he's in the mafia or he's, he's mafia adjacent. I don't know. Anyway, he be beating people up, not in the visual ante kind of way. He, he just likes to get what he wants, I guess. I don't, I don't know. He ends up old dude because he tried to, you know, because he got his wife almost sexually basalted. I didn't get money here. I actually wanted to clear this up. Uh, he didn't kill the pawn shop guy. He actually used him for some other plot where he was trying to take over the Klein company. Uh, it's The plot line is not important. I don't mention it in the rest of this video. I'm pretty sure they just used it as a way to put in filler episodes so that way you could pay more money to watch the show, which is a ripoff and I will discuss why it's a ripoff later in the video. But yeah, I just wanted to put that in real quick that he did not kill this guy. He used him for other nefarious purposes. And anyway, so time goes on and Sebastian and Natalie end up getting close. I'm just gonna show you guys this scene real quick because I just feel like it's very important. Hey, Sebastian, can you come here for a sec? Hey, what are you up to? Girly things. If I had to watch that, so do you. Anyways, after the big reveal and like you figure out who he is, the show gets way less interesting. Step family, they find out about his secret identity before Natalie does. And the evil stepsister tries to blackmail, tries to blackmail him into breaking up with her because now she wants him for herself because she, the evil stepsister realizes that he has money in his own right rather than just like his family's money. There's this weird storyline where one of Natalie's coworkers is actually really jealous of her. And so she tries to get Natalie fired by framing her for the attempted murder of their company's CEO. You know, just girl things yeah by the end of the story the step family gets their comeuppance they end up going broke and they have nothing to fall back on natty learns the truth about sebastian they end up breaking up for like one 60 second scene and then they get back together in the next 60 second scenes like it doesn't mean anything they end up falling in love and then they just ride off into the sunset happily ever after that's <laughs> one of the myriad of really cheesy bad stories from real shorts so i didn't know like where to actually put this in the video and put this in the script so i'm just going to drop this part of the video here and hopefully it makes sense so again i was interested to see like okay how much money would it actually cost me to watch this show if i were to watch it from the app 
So the first 20 episodes are free on YouTube. You can just watch them. They're on their official YouTube channel. But once you hit that 20 episode mark, which is the mark where he kisses her, you still have an additional 35 episodes that if you didn't want to watch it illegally, which you can do, you can look it up on YouTube, it's there, just saying. Um, but if you wanted to watch it legally, you would actually have to go to their app and or their website and pay to watch. I was interested to see how much that would cost. And for every episode, I'm assuming this is for every episode because the way that it works, I can only see the price for the next episode. But for every episode, it's 72 coins. The way that it works is that coins are bought via bundles. And yes, they purposely make this very complicated so you can't really figure out how much money you're spending in order to watch this stuff but you co coins can be bought in different bundles and it seems like the most cost effective bundle would be the 2500 coin bundle which cost 25 dollars that essentially means for every hundred coins is one dollar for assuming that each of these scenes cost 72 cents you are essentially paying 72 cents to watch a 60 second See, if we paid 72 cents for the 35 remaining scenes that are in the show, that would equal $25.20. You are essentially paying $25 to watch this really badly scripted, badly acted shit show of a show. <laughs> For comparison's sake, on the on the movies on Tuesday, on Discount Tuesday, I saw A Haunting in Venice for six bucks. That is a top Hollywood movie with A-list actors, great writing, kept me on my toes, very entertaining. You should go see it if you haven't. I saw that on Tuesday for six bucks. I could have saw that movie four times for about the same amount of money that I would have to pay to sit here and watch The Secret Double Life of My Billionaire Husband. That's a ripoff. Now, don't get the wrong idea from me, all right? I'm making fun of the content itself, not the people who like actually genuinely enjoy this, especially because I'd be the pot calling the kettle black because I love fanfic. I'm a fanfic aficionado. They're really cringy tropes. Like I have so much fun with stuff like that. And I mean, listen, these stories aren't good, but you can't say they're not entertaining. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts on real shorts. Have you heard of real shorts before? Is this your first time hearing about it? use real shorts do you watch the shows on there do you pay for the shows that are on there i'd love to know how much have you paid for them be honest i want to know but yeah please like comment and subscribe and i will see you later imani out hey sebastian can you come here for a sec hey wifey what are you up to girly things